Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from John, and here is what he has to say. Hi Sandman, thanks for the great video on being awakened while married. I started watching your videos about a year ago and have been married for 20 years now. My youngest of three kids is 14 and I haven't decided if I'll divorce after she's out of the house or not, but I do appreciate the red pill that you've actually led me through with regards to your other videos. Well John, thanks for your donation as well as sharing with everyone your potential exit stage left with your wife in the future. Since you didn't give me a specific topic, I want to cover a topic that's been on my mind recently. A friend and I were discussing how women always seem to be avoiding their bodies and showing them in photos on dating sites if their bodies are too fat or unattractive. If they do end up showing their larger than life bodies, usually they wear a massive ski jacket or dress with what looks like a potato sack, big enough to hide her folds. Usually your breasts are out of sight in such a dress, and if you happen to see them, then they often look like a pair of potatoes that fell out of the sack. We all know they cover their bodies, so we won't actually see all that fat. They know they're fat, we know they're fat, so why do they do that instead of just owning up to their bodies and showing them off, instead of covering them up and making it more obvious that they're actually big in Japan? This is something that I've been thinking about a while now. Obviously, the majority of men out there judge women on their appearance first. You also don't see attractive women covering their bodies because they know that they're attractive. Large women cover their bodies hoping the guy doesn't notice so they can basically get their foot in the door and get a first date instead of putting their foot in their mouth. Some large women are so insecure that they actually have to have sex in a pitch black room and they're so ashamed of their bodies. Women internalize their own shame and they don't need a man to tell them that they're fat. They know it but they refuse to show it. As for the women that try and distract you with their bodies covered in puffy coats and colorful dresses that often look like tacky flags from Africa, they want to be seen without being seen. They want you to imagine what's underneath in a positive light. But they're nothing more than a slick used car salesman painting on a shiny coat of paint, but under the hood there's a dead deer and a family of possums. If they were drug dealers, their drugs would be mixed with sugar and rat feces. Just imagine for a moment what the world would be like if women didn't actually have tooth whitening technology or fake up, hair dyes and all the other stuff that they use on their faces. They wouldn't actually be presentable at all. What would they show the camera after the age of 30? Their graying pubic hair, their bad skin or their bad teeth. They would only have until the age of 25 or 30 to land a man and after that they would be contestants in the Spinster Sisters reality television show. But they have all those image enhancing technologies to basically sell their cute smile, neotenous face, and smiley happy positive behavior to sell their lemons of a body as if it was a Lamborghini. They're often hoping to get that first date with a man with higher sexual marketplace value and hope that you like her in person. Their entire strategy comes from a place of dishonesty. She's already lying to you in the dating profile by covering her body and not letting you see the goods. That should be the first and most immediate red flag to go off in your head. Women that hide their bodies are like magicians hiding a land whale behind a mirrored box or making it disappear behind a magic curtain. Pay no attention to the rhinoceros behind the rose-covered blinds. Her face looks fab but her body's covered in flab. Then there are the women that actually have an absolutely gorgeous body but their face looks like Rocky Balboa after he's been in about a thousand fights. I remember in high school one of the female gym teachers had the hottest body but her face looked like it belonged on a gargoyle, or one of those flying monkeys from the Wizard of Oz. Much like her, I find that women with great bodies with hideous hermaphrodite-like faces usually avoid making eye contact. They work really hard to make their faces invisible and are embarrassed to look a guy in the face. But they aren't embarrassed or shy, they're actually just trying to hide in plain sight and are working very hard so you don't notice how ugly they are. That gym teacher had a smoking hot body because she actually had to make up for the fact that she had a face that only her dog could love. So this means there are tons of women out there that either have bad faces or really bad bodies. If you can't hide your average face because it's ugly even with makeup, then you basically have to work your ass off to get a great figure to boost your sexual marketplace value. Imagine for a minute if women didn't actually have makeup, hair extensions, hair dyes, and teeth whitening. They would look rather plain and the only way they'd be able to get the attention of a man is through the shape of the fitness on their bodies. I think that women have become fatter and lazier because they use image enhancing technologies to replace or hide the effort they once put into keeping their weights down. If you look at a bunch of Amish women you'll see how plain they look. Many of them look like boys with boobs. So if they can't enhance their face then they have to work on keeping themselves skinny or possibly doing things around the house because they use their bodies to get the attention they want from a man. If they get fat and old and they aren't married, then no men pay attention to them. We are living in a society where a man with a sexual marketplace value of 7 has to date women with a sexual marketplace value of 5. The reason for that is that women with lower values are enhancing their image to attract men and men don't seem to have as many options as women do. 
We can work out and dress nicely and drive an expensive vehicle, but all of those things take either a lot of time or money, and most of us can't have those options. But makeup, bright colored dresses, the size of parachutes, and hair dye are all cheap in the grand scheme of things. They all require very little money relative to what a man has to do to gather resources and build a physique to attract a woman. So without those image-enhancing technologies, men and women would be on a far more equal playing field when it comes to the sexual marketplace. The reason I bring this up is because in the last year I haven't been dating, but I do continue to use Tinder and OkCupid to see what's out there, and how women are behaving these days. I'm noticing that some women are becoming increasingly desperate for male attention. I'm getting women contacting me after we match almost immediately, and I can smell their desperation. They aren't even waiting as long as they once did, and sure, it's mostly fatties and single mothers, but call me crazy, but I'm noticing an uptick in the number of women online that are making first contact with men. I'm also noticing the less time I spend on Tinder, the more matches I seem to be getting. I haven't changed my pictures or anything, I just know that if I really wanted a woman to fuck around with, that I could have one in less than a week. And also, the lack of sexual scarcity means that it's no longer a big deal to let a bunch of questionably attractive women slip through my fingers. I think that online dating was great at first for the fatties and leper-like women out there, but now men have more choices, so the women at the bottom of the barrel are losing out big time. But still, they're covering their bodies and pretending to have higher sexual marketplace value, even when they don't. They seem to be certain that guys won't notice, but I think that guys are actually starting to notice, and that they're increasingly staying away from such women. I think this is why Generation Z is going to be more conservative than the millennials, because they understand that a fat woman covered in tattoos is not hip and trendy. She's just fat and ugly. I believe there's going to be a revolt against this type of behavior in women by men. Men are not as easily tricked as they once were and they aren't as desperate because dating apps provide access to tons of women out there, even if most of those women are crazy and riding the cock carousel. I think that most men would rather choose crazy and skinny instead of actually fat, a little less crazy and sexually promiscuous. So the fatties are being left behind and that probably is why we're actually seeing a rise in things like slut walk over the last five years. The fat and ugly women are not being desired no matter how much clown makeup and giant body covering dresses they wear, so they're getting pissed off and trying to take their frustrations out on men. As they have done that, men have walked away in larger numbers and eventually women will realize that it's not going to work and eventually women are going to basically have to hit the gym and become conservative with their bodies once again. I want to spend the rest of this video discussing John's situation of being married and debating if he should actually leave his wife once his kids grow up and leave. This is something that a lot of guys seem to bring up. They became awakened while married and the force is with them, but they aren't Jedi yet. They know that if they leave right in the middle of the marriage, their head will be pretty much cut off, hoisted on a spike for all the other men to see, so that's not a good idea. So for right now, it's cheaper to keep her. But many of these men understand that even though they need to stand up to their wives, at this point, it's too late. Once a woman uses you as a whipping boy, she'll never respect you ever again. If you stand up for yourself now, she's going to become agitated and could even leave your ass because she thinks you're full of more crap than a Christmas turkey. So what does a man do once he's become aware of female nature, stop loving his wife, and as a result, now wants to make an escape from prison and his very own version of the Shawshank Redemption? Remember, all it takes is time and pressure, and you too can leave your wife like a champ or like a fart in the wind. First of all, you have to assess the situation and see if she's really as bad as you think she is. If she's an old school woman that lets you come and go and rarely fights, and doesn't try and control and nag you, then you pretty much lucked out. But if she's controlling and spending all your retirement money on cheap tchotchkes and designer purses, then you're going to have to think about what you're going to do over the long term. Many women go crazy once they become empty nesters. So you don't know what she's going to do when the kids are gone. And be prepared. Then there's also how the children take the news and if they take her side instead of yours. Most of them are not going to understand what going the red pill means. Who knows, maybe you'll luck out and about 5 to 10 years from now everyone will know what it means. But for right now, no one has any idea. I would also start thinking about money and where to put it. A couple of years ago, I told a woman that I don't trust anyone with my money and then I put all my money into Bitcoin, so that no one can pretty much get their hands on it but me, and it's easy to hide. Of course, I wasn't actually doing that, but needless to say, after I said that, she called me Hitler and became really pissed off at me, and that relationship was pretty much over. That's the best way to protect your money from anyone else these days, cryptocurrencies, and it's a great test to see what a woman thinks about how you protect your wealth. It's the perfect way to test to see if a woman is a gold digger after all. John, maybe you can actually ask your wife what she thinks about Bitcoin and see what she says just out of curiosity. It might be a bad idea, so don't take my advice on it. I'm just saying that you've got to test a woman to make sure she doesn't leave you first. If you do find that after your kids leave, you can't be yourself around your wife and that you're pretty much outgrown her, then you could actually think about pulling the plug. But also remember that you've been with her for so long now that it's impossible for you to remember what it was like to be single. 
so you might have to deal with the long adjustment period. It took me almost two and a half to three years to feel fine on my own, and until my subconscious mind was not going buck wild anymore, trying to find a woman because the neural pathways in my mind were so accustomed to having someone around me in my life nagging me. Once they were gone, it was the biggest adjustment and took me a few years to fully calm down. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, John, for your donation, and I hope you enjoyed the topic. Don't forget to smash the like button and check out the MGTOW mystery link. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the parachute panties away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.